Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Side News. I'm Joe Borg, and this will be a quick video where we talk about the captain moving on to the Florida Panthers, plus preview today's game against the New York Islanders, where Justin Braun is going to be sitting for asset management. Kind of surprised Derek Broussard is not, unless he also is, but is not sitting for asset management. So you wouldn't want him to get injured if you're going to end up getting a mid-round pick for him, but maybe he's actually not going to end up being traded. And that's kind of a telltale sign of that, and that's why he's in the lineup. But We'll have to see going forward. Also, you're not always subbed out for asset management, but unless if you're worth kind of a certain tier where Braun might be in that tier, so that could also be the other end of it. But when it comes to the trade, obviously, like Jamie Baskow wrote on Flies and Gritty, check out his article if you haven't already. The return on the surface is damningly underwhelming compared to what the, the Ducks got for Lindholm and um, compared to what basically a uh, haggle was traded for and others in this market the market was set higher uh the difference unfortunately is per also one report i will say this too um per the snow the gold podcast chris terry and uh russ and anthony talked about it um they were saying that drew drew wanted assurance that he would be back now <clears throat> again they reported it um I'm assuming it would be true, so who knows, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to trust them on that, and he wanted to sort of be back, and apparently once Chuck, which is also stupid on Chuck's side, because I think a lot of fans would like him to come back in the offseason and would be open to it no matter what, but he didn't give him that assurance, and that's kind of when he said, okay, well, the only team I want to go to is Florida because I don't want to be in a different time zone with my family, and I don't want to play for rivals in Boston and or New York which I think everybody respected the Boston, New York, and then Colorado was more two-hour difference. Not the place I want to be away from my family compared to Florida, it seemed, from the stuff I read on Giroux. So it seemed like they were strapped to being with the Florida Panthers. So on the surface, this trade to me is not good because of the way the market was set. You got a 24 first, which there's some kids that look really good in the 24 drip, but that's still hard to gauge exactly fully what the value of that is a couple years out uh you got um also you got the third for next year that is actually pretty valuable with how deep the 2023 draft is and then maybe you could trade it up because you don't have a second to get a second or yada yada and then obviously they moved on um from Claude Giroux moved on from Bunneman and moved on from Rupsoff um in order to also bring in Owen Tippett with the picks uh this was an interesting trade that I feel also, it can't be, like, obviously that was it for the deal, and maybe it is it because Chuck Fletcher's trade history in his uh, career is not great, but it, it just, that trade strikes, it can't be it, and obviously Braun sitting for asset management, so maybe instead of getting a pick, there is a player that they have lined up to come back for Justin Braun, and that's why they also had to get rid of contractual space via Rubsoff and Bunneman. Or it could also be guys like Brink, Attard, and others um, when they're done with their collegiate seasons, just as we've seen multitudes of guys get, get stacked up around the league to their ELCs. It could also be that, because you have to open up contract spaces to sign guys to their ELCs, whether it's Noah Cates, Bobby Brink, uh, Ronnie Attard, or others. you got to have the space to put them on your team. So... I think from that premise at first, I was like, what the heck are we giving up? Not that obviously those two guys are going to be mainstays in the Flyers lineup going forward. It didn't look like that was the case. And Rupsov really looked like the Flyers pushed him as an odd man out. But it's more, what's the point of giving up extra guys just to get back Tibbet and picks? And it's something against Tibbet. I think Tibbet's a good goal scorer that plays kind of the game a little bit like Wade Allison. I think Wade shoots a little bit better on the fly, but Tibbet's a guy that can shoot the puck really well, play a physical game and all that. But he's a guy that's still trying to figure it out at the NHL level. We obviously won a player of the week at the AHL level. He's figured it out at that level. Um, but at the NHL level, he's still trying to find his full strides. But obviously here, <clears throat> I think he'll have a much significant chance at finding his full strides in Florida, where he was buried when he was up anyway and was kind of on the third line, playing with third line guys on the fourth line. Where here, he's going to get to play with a guy like Frost who is still learning the NHL himself, but maybe those two can help each other out. And then Oscar Lindblom, who's been fantastic, a tale of two seasons, where in the second half of the season, he's been very good and probably one of the best players, not probably one of the best players on the ice since the start of the new year for the Philadelphia Flyers. So I think putting him with Lindblom, letting Frost be the guy 
to try to set up Tibbet or get set up by Tibbet since he can pass a little bit as well. Just hopefully we keep him in that shooting mentality and don't let him get in the TK passive mentality. Uh, he can be a good asset for this team. The Flyers just have to put him in the right spot and keep him in the right mindset because something obviously happened along the realm with TK where they got him out of the mindset and or he got out of the mindset of the Flyers couldn't come back in to just shoot the damn puck rather than be over passive. So the key for Owen Tibbet is put him in the right spot to succeed. I would not be surprised if he's already on the power play today. Um, <clears throat> and then keep him in the right mentality because the Flyers seem to also have guys switch, and then all of a sudden, y y you have guys um, in a different, like, passing mentality when they were a guy that were great at shooting and scored three straight when you're talking about TK 24 goal season. I think Tibbet has great scoring potential. He's a physical guy that blocks shots. It's just, with that trade, you would have thought you would have got Samuskevich, also Denisenko, who were more of the all-around players and not just the, the physical good scorers. But that's fine. I, again, Owen Tibbet's a fine player. Uh, the picks, 2024, 2023, third, those are fine. It's just this trade on the surface is definitely underwhelming value-wise. But I see now being able to, and this is why I wanted to do the video today, kind of. Also, I was busy covering ECHL games. I'm going up to cover one later today as well. But uh, I think it's... It seems from some reports coming in, it could have been, if Florida was the only destination, you're not going to get the best assets from Florida. And if Drew isn't going to stay in Florida after this year, you're also not going to get the best assets from Florida. That's kind of my conclusion. I don't like the trade still, don't get me wrong, in terms of how the market value was set when it came to other trades. But it is what it is. They were kind of hamped into just being able to go to Florida, and they were still able to get Owen Tibbet and a first back while being... um honed into only one team and if the reports are true that G wanted assurance for coming back and then once he didn't get that assurance he said well then the only team I want to go to is Florida but when it comes to today this is an odd pairing but it has right now it has Van Riemsdyk although it also has the line that Jamie reported different so I would think TK Maybe he's on the first line instead of the second because this has Limblom Frost connect me with Jamie reported it's Limblom Frost tip it. Um, and then may you Hayes Farabee is what this has. Wilman, Pat, Patrick Brown, and then uh, whoever's on that fourth line with him where they have tip it, but <clears throat> Jamie was saying he's with Frost. I think Calf Friendly kind of has the lines, which is understandable with the way that the Flyers roster movement has been flipping. They also still have uh, Jerry Mayhew in it, which um, could be the case if he clear if with the waiver the way waivers works if they need him to come in and all that stuff but I don't know how that all played out with Jerry Mayhew since obviously he did go on waivers I guess maybe he maybe he's already back up with the team according to Cap Friendly so Avon Provorov York you would expect that Sanheim Risto Yandel Braun you would expect that and then I would assume Carter Hart would start today uh not just because he's obviously our best goaltender but also because you're getting what you're getting from Morton Jones at this point and you don't want to throw him into the game before the deadline and then have the worst happen, excuse me, and have him get injured. So I would assume that those would be around the lineups. The The lineups in terms of forward lines are a little screwed up on cap friendly, understandably so, uh, because of the movements made. But again, it's not a good trade on the surface, but it's a trade that I feel like ha there has to be more to it when it comes to signing guys that are non-roster guys right now that are in college that you need to sign to their ELCs, or when it comes to also trades down the line via using that 2024 pick, because I would be surprised if we make that 2024 pick that's top 10 protected, which is kind of, I don't think Florida's going to have a pick in the top 10 unless if something really falls apart drastically uh, in the 2023 season, but um, it, it's, it's, a trade, it's a trade that I, I think I just realized at this point, being a fan, somebody that watched G from day one to the end, the organization did fail him during his time here. Now he gets a chance to succeed and get a cup in Florida. So I don't like the trade, but I do like the fact that our captain now gets a chance to succeed with a team that has a great chance to win the Stanley Cup. But, well, I shouldn't say I don't like the trade as a whole because I do like how it tip it. It's just I wanted more <laughs> assets wise back because on nitty gritty buckets, I was a little bit tough on. Tippett, but that's because when I talk about Giroux, I do get emotional and I get over 
of, over the jump just because he's my favorite player of all time. It's for the Flyers, I was born in 96, and he's a guy I watch from start to finish. I know I'm going a little long on this video, but... Um, and that's why I kind of sometimes say something against another person when it comes to Drew that isn't really true. Tibbet, I think, will be a good goal scorer for this team. I think he'll be a good power play guy for this team. And I think could develop into a good guy as long as you keep him in that goal scoring mindset and don't let him get him. However, TK over the time changed from shoot to get the 24 goal seasons three straight to now all of a sudden trying to pass it across ice too many times. But... The key for today's game, obviously play a much cleaner third period. The third period's been killing them lately. The second period's been the killer most of the season. The closeout has been the killer of late, excuse me, where the third period, the Flyers, really just for some reason seem to fall asleep at this point where it's like, okay, we showed up for two, uh, we're not really in it anyway, and then they kind of just fall, fall off. Um, the key would be to have a better third period, obviously in every game with this team. Uh, Carter Hart is a key for the team. And then also, Owen Tippett. Let's see what he can do in his first game. Uh, it's his first game. It's going to be exciting to see what the kid can do uh, here in Philadelphia. Uh, he's going to be with guys that have a chance to set him up, especially uh, Oscar Lindblom, obviously good guy that can score, but also pass the puck. Morgan Frost uh, goes both ways as well. Obviously, he's still trying to figure out his own footing in the NHL. So sometimes though having two guys that are trying to find their way can actually Bounce, bounce off of each other and really become decent chemistry-wise. So we see if that happens here with the Flyers, because that would be great if they can kind of find something for Frost, too, that really helps him. And if that ends up being Owen Tippett, well, voila, that does help another side of the equation as well. Everybody, please have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below. Up above the each of these widgets to keep us growing to 215 or more by the end of March. Help us grow to the end of March. Go peace out, everybody, and stay safe.